What's up YouTube? Welcome back. 357 SIG ammo test series number four today. We're going for the critical duty. I know, I said duty. This Hornady critical duty has a 135 grain flex lock bullet and it is traveling at an advertised velocity of 1225 from the muzzle. Personally, Critical Duty is always a favorite of mine. They seem to calibrate their bullets all to a specific ending point in gel. You'll probably see this thing. I'm just gonna take a stab at it right now. It's gonna be at about 19 or 20 inches, probably. But they tend not to over penetrate. However, they are somewhat barrier blind and they tend to open up pretty consistently. Let's see if the 357 SIG version is any different. We're going to be using two different firearms today. The first one will be the SIG Nightmare 1911, that's a 5 inch. And then we have the MP 357 SIG 1.0, that's a 4.25 inch barrel. They're both iron sighted, but at least we put polymer versus steel. They both do have three dot white sights, and we'll be sending five rounds through each one of these firearms into these B8 targets from 20 feet away. 15 feet off the chronograph, we're going to get an average of velocity, therefore work out the average of foot-pounds, and we're going to see how accurate these rounds are. And accuracy will be tested offhand, no bench table rest or anything like that. This is defensive ammo, these are defensive guns. We're going to test practical accuracy. We're going to move the chronograph to right in front of the gel so that hopefully we capture the velocity of the bullet as it goes into the gel. As far as gel, we have 10% clear ballistics, two 20-inch blocks for a total of 40 inches. Testing explained, let's get to shooting. All right, let's start with the MMP 357 SIG. We got five rounds. Let's see how we do on that left V8 target. We are in the X-ring at 1219. We went to the right a little bit, 1196. And we are to the right a little bit more, 1209. Bring it to the right for some reason, 12.05. All right, let's go take a look. That was 1,200 right on the head. All right, well me and this gun and this ammo are headed over to the right a little bit, but the group itself is not bad. The controllability is good. My sights are for the most part centered I haven't had a whole lot of time behind this gun, but there is a possibility that these sights are off just a little bit. I would take the group for what it is though, and it is within the whole defensive standard that we use, which is inside the black, you know, a handful size area. Not bad, but let's see what the 1911 can do. All right, 1911, totally different animal. Let's see what we can get. Oh, that felt nice. This is a nice gun. Hopefully it proves out to shoot a nice group right now. Ooh, and those sights are bright in the sun. There's my excuse. A little bit high into the left at 1261, but it felt great. We are right on the X at 1247. A little bit higher than the X at, or above the X ring at 1221. And now, for some reason, I'm circling it, 1248. Another one in the X-Ring, 1232. Let's go take a look. All right, again, not a bad group, but not my best shooting, or just the ammo's not that groupy, one of the two. But definitely, again, within the realm of defensive standards. We can take that. That's... That's perfectly fine. That'll get the job done. Again, there you go. Of course, I like to hit the X-Ring every time, but you can't win them all. All right, let's see how we do in the gel. I'm going to take a bet right now, and I'm going to say 18 and a half inches just for fun. But you never know. Good shot placement, I think. 12.09. Let's see what we did. All right, 1209. 
and there was the entrance right where we wanted so that we can see from top and bottom clearly and there we go we don't have too devastating of a wound channel sometimes critical duties tend to have a pretty darn good wound channel i don't know what the slow motion looks like yet but right at the 12 inch mark we started to settle down pretty good sorry about all those swirlies in the block but i didn't get that one clean perfectly so we go down to a very piercing wound channel towards the bottom and if you can see it starts to go right towards the bottom and it bounces at the 18 inch mark it bounces off of the bottom which is a rubber mat and it somehow it separates these two blocks out and it does skip under or in that block let me move it around and see what it looks like to see if it's actually under or in it but first of course let's look from the top all right pretty much looks the same from the top going down ends up to be a piercing wound channel we can see it leave the polymer tip right there leaves one block goes into the next one it is peeled back it does do exactly what the critical duties always do and the defense line for the most part the critical defense i mean and we are about one and a half, maybe two inches into that next block, but let's get her dug out. And camera guy reminded me that I do need to do the 1911 test first, so let's do that. All right, let's see if we can get the 1911 to do some 1911 magic with the help of a little extra barrel too. So the last one was 1209. That was a good shot right there, exactly where we wanted it at 1253. Twelve fifty-three, and like I said that shot's where we wanted it the top right part of that gel block so that we can see from both angles and looking at it from the side I definitely see a better wound track now I like that it's a little bit better that's what we're used to seeing out of the higher speed things maybe 10 millimeter ish type of things and 357 is no joke it's a very fast 9 millimeter we see that bullet it's landed right there and it's created its own little cocoon of chaos to land in and I'd say if I straighten out this tape properly, maybe we're at, it takes up the space between 16 and a half and 17 and a half inches pretty good. It has a little bit of a bounce back, maybe from 18. It's landing face forward as far as I can tell. I think the polymer tip's still right in the middle of it. But yeah, that's definitely a good wound track. So I would say just that minimal velocity increase from that barrel, I'd say that does make a difference with this ammunition. And man, that thing almost got to where I would have bet it would have got out of the four and a quarter inch barrel. It's at I mean, I think the permanent wound track there, even though we had a bounce back, it went to about the 18 and a quarter. Almost got that 18 and a half. Let's look from the top. All right, there we go. It looks better from the top also. Just definitely wider track. And it doesn't go any deeper or farther as far as the chaos part, but it's definitely bigger in the beginning. And then it creates its own separate version of chaos down here somehow. So pretty cool. Now let's get them dug out. All right, upon digging them out, the one from the M&P was actually under this gel block a little bit. It wasn't necessarily in it. We're gonna reshoot that one real quick. This is the one from the 1911, but let's pause, let's reshoot, and I'll come right back to this. All right, one more to try to make this test right, because I'm not sure if it had enough resistance knowing that it was skipping off the bottom of things. Right, good shot let's take a look we had 1188 all right 1188 and it was that shot in the middle to the right coming across to the side you're gonna see that it did not exit the block this time so Let's get things straightened out so we can take a better look. All right, we got things straightened out, and now we have the same pretty much initial wound cavity, I would say. Nothing changed much there. It did do another dive down, kind of. It went towards the path of least resistance, the edge of that block, I'd say. Maybe. Maybe I'm full of crap. But there you go, focused in on it. You see the polymer tip a little ahead of it. It had a bounce back, so it kind of left that forward. It bounced back from, I would say it touched 18 inches, but now it's landing right dead center in the middle of 17 inches. The camera angle kind of doesn't show it. it. Might be on the back end of 17, but it's at 17. So there we go. It did not go as far as when it skipped across the bottom. That's why we had to retest it. And that's gonna be a very tricky one to see. It's right there on the bottom of your screen. And you're going to see the projectile landing right there. It's hard to see, it's a bad angle. If I try to come right from the top, you're not gonna see it. I guess you can kind of see it going under there, but 
It's kind of a bad angle or a bad shot for that angle at the top. I can't get the focus to fix in on anything. It just wants to fixate on that top cavity. I think that's the best focus I'll get right there to show it to you, but it's hard to see the projectile. But we'll definitely dig it out right now. All right, MMP shot one, MMP shot two, and then the 1911 shot. These two MMP shots look almost identical. We'll have the measurements up in the corner. This is what the polymer tip looks like after it gets a little chunky. It usually gets left behind somewhere in there or get pushed a little forward. Here's the five inch 1911. You can see it spread those pedals out a little bit more. It seems to put the brakes on usually, but this one made it pretty good. Looking at them from the side, nothing too special to see. They all peeled back and tucked their pedals exactly like they usually do for a critical duty. And from the bottom, nothing special to see. They all tucked their pedals back, big long posts because they're somewhat heavy bullets. One thing you'll find about critical duties is they're usually pretty consistent. They're consistent from caliber to caliber. Like I said, it's almost like they're calibrated to all perform within that FBI spec or whatever it is, but they do really good through auto glass. I've tried it multiple times. They do good penetrating things in general, whether it's clothing, whatnot, and they always seem to expand the same way. Every now and then something might knock them off course or whatever. They don't exactly fly through the gel straight every time, but they expand the same way every time. So you know that they're doing the same thing upon tissue or whatever they're gonna hit. Being slightly barrier blind or made out of maybe a little bit of a harder material, I think that they would do good crushing through certain things. And they would also definitely make it through things like sheetrock, I'm sure pretty well, thin sheet metal, things like that take that for what it's worth. They are called critical duty. Very similar to the critical defense line, but they are different. You saw what it did in the gel. You saw what it did in the slow-mo. You see that the accuracy is acceptable, at least out of these firearms with me today. So take all that information and use it how you see fit. 357 SIG is a, is a no joke nine millimeter cartridge. Anybody that likes nine millimeters should love 357 SIG. It just doesn't get the love it deserves. This might not be the best example of 357 SIG, but if you look around, you'll see that there is some major power, really chaotic ammunition out there that does some crazy stuff on target. So it is one of the coolest nine millimeters in my opinion. Hope you liked this test. If you found it helpful, maybe give it a thumbs up and share it around. If you're not subscribed to the Turkey's Opinion, you're probably missing out on something you wanna see. If you are subscribed, make sure that your notification bell is turned on so that you don't miss anything you wanna see. And if you really think we're doing a good job at the Turkey's Opinion, we are on Patreon and we do have the YouTube join button turned on so you can become a member of the channel. Thank you to people that are at both of those places. Thanks everybody for watching this video and until we see you at the next one, stay safe, have fun, and keep shooting.